Hello, welcome to our lesson on factoring the difference of squares. In this lesson, we're going to look at factoring the difference of squares. Here's our anchor for Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at some of the, the skills that we need to be able to do this and see if we can find some patterns in what we do. Remember, when you multiply a set of binomials like this, you can use a FOIL method or you can use the Mr. Buffington better than FOIL method method. And in that method, we simply use the distributive property. You take the first term times everything inside the second one, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x. Then you take the second term and you multiply that times everything inside the second set of parentheses. Negative 2x times x gives you negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 2 gives you a negative 4. Then we'll join together like terms. Plus 2x minus 2x. Well, if I have 2x's and I take them away, then I'm left with nothing. So what I'll end up with is just x squared minus 4 as my final answer. Okay, let's go over to the second one. We're going to, again, use the distributive property y times y is y squared y times negative 5 is negative 5y. Five, 5 times y, 5y. Five, 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And look, these two terms are the same again. Negative 5y plus 5y. So when I take 5y and I subtract 5 of them away, they disappear. I'm left with no y's. And so I'll simply be left with y squared, my first term, and negative 25 in my final term. And when we look at this, do we see any patterns? I see a couple of patterns, the way we multiplied through, how we were able to completely eliminate the middle term. Those are some of the patterns that I see. Do you see any other patterns? Think about that for a minute, and we are going to go ahead and look at factoring the difference of squares. When we factor the difference of squares, you get something like this. A perfect square minus another perfect square. Makes sense. Difference is subtraction, and squares are two perfect squares. That's why we call this difference of squares. We're finding the difference of two perfect squares. And whenever you have the difference of two perfect squares, you can simply write out two sets of parentheses, say the square root of the first one minus the square root of the second one, the square root of the first one plus the square root of the second one, as you see here. So it's actually one of the easiest ways to factor. Let's take a look at this. Is the first term a perfect square? Yep. Is, this, is the last term a perfect square? Yep. Are we finding the difference? We sure are. So let's just go ahead and set up some parentheses. Square root of the first term, square root of x squared is x plus, or minus, I guess. doesn't really matter if we do the plus first or second. So square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. That's it. We're done. And that's our final answer. We've just factored this difference of squares. Okay, we're going to start getting a little bit more quick at this, too. First off, is it a perfect square? Yep. Is it a perfect square? Yep. Are we finding the difference? Yep. On a lesson in difference of squares, we're probably not going to need to do that step every time. But you should recognize when you see a difference of squares, because they'll stand out. It'll just have two terms, and it'll be a subtraction question, and you'll have a perfect square minus a perfect square. And whenever you do that, just write out your parentheses. Square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. And we're done. Square root of a is a squared is a. Square root of 9b squared is 3b. And we're done. Let's do another one. Perfect square minus a perfect square. We set up our parentheses square root of the first term minus the square root of the final term. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the final term. Done. You really should get to be that quick. Of course, my 
writing is not as neat, but that's all you have to do. All right, let's do another one. You can try this one out. Pause the recording. Go ahead and try this one out. See what you get when you take those two terms and you get the the perfect the uh, well, factor of those perfect squares. First term is a perfect square. Take the square root of that first term minus the square root of the final term. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the final term. We're done. That's our final answer. And that's about how easy it is. Let's try one more here. f to the power of 4 minus 81. This one here is a little bit more tricky because we've got that s to the power of 4 there. Now, I'm going to try and make this as straightforward as possible. But again, there will be an extra step in this one. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take the square root of the first term. Square root of s to the power of 4 is s squared. And then I'm going to add the square root of the second term. I'll take the square root of the first term and subtract the square root of the second term. Now, you'll notice I did the subtraction second, and I like to do it that way. I know that um, typically you'll see it done with the subtraction first and the addition second. But I like doing it this way because of this situation. Look what we have now. If you look here, you have a perfect square minus another perfect square. So I'm going to leave the first set of parentheses exactly the way they are. Works better this way when you've got the plus out in front. All right. Now I'm going to factor the second set of parentheses into being square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. Square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So square root of s squared is s. Square root of 9 is 3. And then we're done. So we take the square root here, but our result gives us another perfect square. So we need to be careful when you have a perfect square minus a perfect square that you factor it completely. Let's take a look at our last one, s minus 3. Is that a perfect square minus a perfect square? Not at all. So this one is actually factored down to its simplest form right there. Okay. Again, this one here took one more step, but it's a good step, and it's just doing the same exact thing. Let's do one more like that. Oh, dear. What about this when you've got a 16 minus x squared? What do we do with that one? Usually the variables in front. Oh, boy. Well, let's just do it the same way we've always done and see how that works out for us. All right. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the final term square root of the first term minus the square root of the final term. All right, and we're done. It really doesn't have to be any more complicated. It just looks a little bit different because you're seeing it differently. I'm going to double check. Is this um, a perfect square? And this a perfect square? Well, this one's a perfect square, but this one is not. So we're done at this point. All right. If we had had x to the power of 4, then we would have another step on this one. But with that, we're just done at this point. All right? And that will be our final answer. So just a quick recap. Whenever you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, take the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. Again, you'll notice I did it a little bit differently than the equation states. I put the addition first and the subtraction second. And we know that when you multiply, you can multiply in whatever order you want. Multiplication is commutative, so you can do it either way, and it's absolutely fine. All right, one more question so that you can show me what you know. You'll go ahead and pick A, B, C, or D. I'm going to stop talking for a second, let you work in silence, and then I will show you which one is the correct answer, and we'll see if you got it. All right, I'm back, because you can pause the recording. So I don't have to stay quiet for too long, and I don't like staying quiet, so this works out really well for me. All right, I'm going to take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the, the final term. 
I'm going to multiply that times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. All right, so what do I end up with? w plus 7 times w minus 7. Look at that, it's right there. And you'll notice in this question with the options, it did it addition first, subtraction second. So as I stated before, it doesn't matter which order you do it. You can take the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second or square root of the first term plus. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in as far as um, addition and subtraction. But what you do need to realize is that this is the same thing as this. And so don't be fooled if you get the question like this and select none of these because this one here is the correct answer. It means exactly the same thing. It's just done in a different order. Remember, you can multiply in any order that you get. All right. Hopefully that short lesson was helpful for you in learning how to do the difference of squares, factoring them. Have a wonderful